All right, I guess we're just supposed to do Jalen Ramsey talk every single day until he's here, right? It's also a mock draft Monday. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, hey, what's happening, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It's a Monday edition. Welcome back in Locked On Lions on the Locked On Podcast Network on a Monday, February 27th. In a Tuesday, February 28th. Thanks for listening. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day right here on Locked On Lions. You can follow us on Twitter at Derry Speaks, D E R Y Speaks, at Locked On Lions, the Matt Derry Facebook fan page where we post the podcast every day. And also, Thanks to those of you watching on the Lockdown Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe so you get the uh, show each and every day right here on Lockdown Lions. If you're new to the show, welcome in. Tell your Lion fan friends we're here every day. We're talking Lions football. We're going to be here all week this week talking combines, some of the players and some of the big-time prospects showing up in Indianapolis, go through drills, everything else. Brad Holmes is going to speak this week. Dan Campbell will talk this week. And uh, we'll we'll go live and direct to Indianapolis at some point this week as well with some guests. Uh, we got to do Mock Draft Monday today. It's back, yes. Our friends at the Draft Network and the co-host of the brand new Locked On NFL Draft podcast right here on the Locked On Network, Damian Parson, had his latest Mock Draft today, including a trade for the Lions. We'll tell you about that coming up on the show. Also, uh, we got to get into the Jalen Ramsey situation. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen players from one team just openly pandering for a player on another team and begging almost daily, whether it's podcasts, Twitter, Instagram. All the Lion players want Jalen Ramsey to come to Detroit. I guess I have to buy in now. I guess I have to, like, embrace the fact that, like, the Lions are this big-time suitor for Jalen Ramsey. And Jeremy Fowler of ESPN reported this weekend, Jalen Ramsey could be on the move. We will get into that coming up on the show as well today. But uh, thanks for checking us out and uh, watching, listening, right here on Locked on Lions. Um, it, it, the, the, the Ramsey story, let's just start here, all right? The Lions, let's start from the beginning. The Detroit Lions need another cornerback. They probably need two more corners. The Lions cornerback situation right now, Jeff Okuda, Jerry Jacobs, and then who knows what, right? Will Harris, free agent. Do I think the Lions are going to bring him back? Probably. All right. Um, You got to throw Amani Oruwarie into the mix. Although I don't think the Lions are going to want to bring him back. Uh, He struggled immensely last season and likely is going to find a home elsewhere all right um will harris took a lot of oruarie's uh snaps last year okuda gonna be back for year four but what do you have in him jerry jacobs really solid player bobby price is a free agent lions tried aj parker uh they tried mike hughes who's also a free agent but this team is in need of cornerbacks All right. And you can never have enough in this league, in this day and age. It's a passing league and accumulating a lot of good cornerbacks is probably a good idea. I didn't, I never thought Jalen Ramsey would be a great fit because what the Lions are doing right now is not going out and trading for players approaching 30, trading for players making $17 million a year. Trading for players who have 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 had a history of problems on and off the field. And that's what Jalen Ramsey has done. When he was in Jacksonville years ago, he had an altercation on the sideline where he was attacking his then head coach, Doug Marone. Had to be restrained. Basically, when AWOL on the Jaguars claimed that his girlfriend, who was Golden Tate's sister, was having a baby, and he needed three weeks, three weeks for the birth of his child. He missed weeks four through six of that season. I think it was 2019. 
and the Jaguars had had enough of him. Ramsey wanted out, and guess what? He got his wish. The Jags traded Jalen Ramsey to the Rams for like two first-round picks and a fourth-round pick. He is arguably one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL going on the last five, six, seven years. He's a really good player. He's going to be 29 years old this season. But that doesn't mesh with what the Lions are doing. Do the Lions need Jalen Ramsey's talent? Yes. Could they use him as a player? Of course. But Brad Holmes has been slow and steady in this race. One-year deals, using his draft picks, picking up more draft capital, not signing big-name players or trading. I mean, he made a big trade, but Matthew Stafford said, get me out of here. So Stafford wanted to go to L.A. Holmes called his buddy Les Snead with the Rams, where, of course, Brad Holmes spent many years, and the deal was consummated. And the Lions got back two number ones and Jared Goff and, you know, other picks, one turning out to be Ify Melifonwu, whatever. So I never really took this seriously that Jalen Ramsey would be coming to Detroit. Fast forward to Sunday morning on ESPN Sports Center when Jeremy Fowler, NFL analyst, was on the show, reporter, whatever, NFL reporter, and they said, what's the latest on Jalen Ramsey? And Fowler said the Rams may be looking to deal him to get out from underneath his salary. The team that two years ago won a Super Bowl last year was horrible and may need to start over. Ramsey's owed $17 million this coming season. Again, he'll be going into his age 29 year. And then whoever the host on SportsCenter said, oh, who are some suitors? And he said the Detroit Lions and the Las Vegas Raiders. Fowler said, you know, Brad Holmes connection, and they need a cornerback. It's like, there it is again. Then Jerry Jacobs took to Twitter yesterday, Lions cornerback, and said, quote, what we waiting on at Jalen Ramsey, tweeting right at him. We can do some great things in the D, my guy. Trust and believe that. At this point, we just got to recruit Jalen. Now, again, that would be adding on, end quote, $17 million. Amon Ross St. Brown on his podcast. Oh, yeah. Jalen Ramsey, are you listening? We want you. You know, Jared Goff said, love Jalen Ramsey. When asked about it at the Pro Bowl. Now Jerry Jacobs going public. I've never, ever remembered a time where the Lions and their players not the organization per se, but the players were openly out there recruiting another player on another team who's under contract. I don't know if this is going to happen. I just know that Jalen Ramsey tried to punch his coach. I just know that Jalen Ramsey tried to punch his brother-in-law-ish. Golden Tate, remember when Ramsey was with the Rams? Got into a fight after a game with Golden Tate. So Ramsey was dating his sister. This year, the, the personal foul cheap shot on DK Metcalf at the end of the Rams-Seahawks game, which wasn't a great call per se, but it cost the Rams. These are little things that really don't mesh with what this culture is doing here under Dan Campbell. But all the Lion players seem to want him here. Now there are reports he could get here. Peter King today in Football Morning of America said, oh yeah, Jalen Ramsey will probably fetch a number two and a number four. First time he was traded from Jacksonville, it was two number ones and a number four. Would you give up a second round pick and a fourth round pick? Lions have a couple of number twos, remember, for Jalen Ramsey. They have the third most draft capital of any team this year. Or do you want to keep building through the draft and be conservative? I just don't know if this is the fit, but it seems like, all the Lion players want him. They're all calling for him. Come on over. Heck, even Micah Parsons was tweeting about it a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Nobody's leaving L.A. for Detroit. Well, Jalen Ramsey might not have a choice. If the Rams 
Les Need calls Brad Holmes and says, we're making this trade. You want to make it? Brad Holmes says, yes. Jalen Ramsey has to come here. Unless he just like doesn't report or refuses to come here. Who knows? So, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm stunned that it's gotten this much traction. But now the reports are out there. You got ESPN saying, major two major suitors could be the Lions and Raiders. Why would you possibly go to the Raiders? You'd want to come here. So I, I'm ready for this. I'm preparing myself for Jalen Ramsey to be coming here. I just don't know if I would give up a two and a four, maybe a three and a four. He's also going to be close to 30. It's pretty expensive, but he's really good. He's a good corner. Very good corner. What I see today, Jamel Dean could be getting 20 million a year in free agency. You look at the numbers, Ramsey's numbers are just as good, if not better than Dean's, who was in Tampa Bay, of course, last year. All right, coming up next, a mock draft Monday. Let's have some fun with it. You know, my mouse sometimes, like, I need a new battery for this thing. You know, turn it on and off just to get it going sometimes. There's the red light. Um, what about FanDuel? Let's talk about it. Midway point of the NBA season is here. Great action yesterday. Mavs and the Lakers was fun to watch. Perfect time to download the FanDuel app. America's number one sports book because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars download the fanduel sports app it's uh, simple it's safe it's secure easy to use then you can bet on everything you want from the money line to point scores three pointers drained pistons are playing tonight they don't have any healthy bodies but maybe they'll beat the hornets you never know maybe johnny kane will send another tweet out about george blaha you can bet on that at fanduel maybe don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, here we go. We're back on Locked on Lions. Hope everybody's having a great Monday. Combine starts tomorrow through Sunday in Indianapolis. Uh, what I see today, C.J. Stroud is going to throw. A lot of talk about the Bears. Adam Schefter reporting. The Bears are shopping this pick, and they're likely going to trade out. So somebody's going to come up, whether it's the Colts at four or another team, maybe Carolina at nine. Somebody's coming up to number one to grab a quarterback. And this is great news for the Lions at number six because they have some leverage too. And the more teams want to move up and, and take quarterbacks, Better news it is for the Lions. There's more players and more quarterbacks, Levis, Stroud, um, um, uh, Bryce Young, will slot, will we'll, we'll be taken ahead of the Lions, and maybe, just maybe, an elite defensive player will slide to the Lions at six. Now, today is Mock Draft Monday right here on Locked On Lions. Our buddy Damian Parson, co-host of the Locked On NFL Draft podcast, did his latest mock draft today on the draftnetwork.com. He has the Lions. Well, he has, he, first of all, let's go here. Damian Parson has Anthony Richardson going number one to the Colts via a trade with the Bears. So the Colts would pick number one and trade the number four pick, the number 35 pick, and a first rounder next year to move up three slots to take Anthony Richardson at number one. How about that? Bryce Young would go number two to Houston. Quarterback from Alabama. Jalen Carter, D-tackle from Georgia, number three to Arizona. The Bears, who then now would be picking at four, would still get Will Anderson, the edge from Alabama. Seattle at number five would take Tyree Wilson, pass rush extraordinaire from Texas Tech. And the Lions would make a trade. Carolina needs a QB. They would send the number nine pick to the Lions for pick number six, and the Lions would also pick up a third round pick number 93 and a first rounder next year from Carolina just to move up three slots so the Panthers can get Will Levis. I would do that right now, <laughs> right here, right now. 
So Levis would go six, Stroud seven to the Raiders in this mock draft. Christian Gonzalez, cornerback at number eight out of Oregon. And the Lions, you would figure, would get Devin Witherspoon from Illinois right at number nine. This would be sweet. Except in this mock draft, Damien is the Lions taking Joey Porter number nine. I love I love you, Damien. If the Lions could trade down from six to nine and still get Witherspoon, sign me up. I'm not taking Porter over Witherspoon. Damian writes, quote, the Lions offense was not an issue in 2022. It was the defensive side of the ball. Jeff Okuda return, returned from an ACL injury and played good football. He did not have much assistance on the opposite side of the field. Joey Porter Jr. has the physical tools and traits that you cannot teach. Porter Jr. and Okuda would be a nice tandem to build around in that defensive secondary. I, I, I like Joey Porter Jr., but I'm not taking it, him ahead of Witherspoon from Illinois. I'm not. I'm just not. Witherspoon would go number 10 in this mock draft to the Eagles. Then the Lions at number 18 could get their hands if they wanted to in this mock draft on Brian Brissy from Clemson, um, Osiris Torrance from Florida. But in this mock, they would take Lucas Van Ness, edge from Iowa, at 18. Quote, the pursuit of creating a more talented defensive unit for Aaron Glenn continues. Aiden Hutchinson was a force off the edge as a rookie, and I love pairing him with Van Ness. That gives, this gives the Lions two nonstop and relentless edge defenders to collapse the edges around opposing quarterbacks. Lucas Van Ness is raw with his hands, but Hutchinson is a master technician and could be a teacher for his fellow Big Ten rusher. End quote. This is an interesting pick, and I want to dive into that coming up next. All right, so the Lions in this mock would get two, count them, two defensive players, one at nine and one at 18. Both Big Ten defensive players, by the way, in Joey Porter Jr. from Penn State and Lucas Van Ness from Iowa. I'll be honest, I don't see Van Ness going this high, but... An edge at 18, I wouldn't rule out. Now, Jeff Risden, our buddy from the Lions Wire, says he has heard that the Lions are not going to take an edge rusher and that they love the guys they have now. Either Harris or uh, Okwara, you don't figure both would stay. Aiden Hutchinson, James Houston, Josh Pascal, who can play inside or outside, but maybe they want him more on the outside. And you can't forget about John Kaminsky being re-signed if he comes back to the team. And you also have Julian Okwara, who plays that position. So while, yes, the Lions seem to have a lot of options right now, um, you know, Jeff believes the Lions are not taking an edge until day three. Brad Holmes has shown the last few years he loves D linemen. Aleem McNeil, Holmes draft pick. Owns Arike, Holmes draft pick. Houston, Holmes draft pick. Hutchinson, Holmes draft pick. Pascal, Holmes draft pick. D linemen are what Brad Holmes loves to snack on when it comes to the draft. He also signed Charles Harris, re-signed Charles Harris, signed Romeo Aquara, um, brought in and traded for Michael Brockers. He's added a lot of defensive linemen. Michael Brockers, by the way, has been let go. No surprise. So I love Jeff Risden, but I, I almost disagree unless he's got a great source. I could see the Lions taking an edge like a Van Ness at 18. I could also see them, you know, uh, trading out of that pick. B. John Robinson could be at 18. He's taken 28 in this mock draft. I could see an offensive lineman, like I mentioned. Torrance, Harrison from Oklahoma, move him inside. Remember, Jonah Jackson's a free agent after this year. Lions are going to need to add some depth on that offensive line just in case they can't re-sign their Pro Bowl left guard. Now, Pete Skaronsky goes 17 in this mock, the big tackle from Northwestern, uh, who I would love the Lions to take at 18 if he was somehow there, but I don't see him being there. Lots of options for Detroit, but very interesting. Cornerback and edge, but not Brissy, not that Brissy's more of an interior guy. 
not Brissy, um, not uh, Miles Murphy, and not Witherspoon, but Porter and Van Ness. We'll try to get a hold of Damian Parson, and we'll get him on the show this week to talk about a little mock draft Monday here. All right, thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out right here on Locked On Lions this Monday edition. The Jalen Ramsey Pursuit shows are going to be in full full effect. What 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 do you got? Are we going to get a Jamison Williams tweet next? What about uh, uh, what about one of the Oquaras? Are they going to tweet out or ask for Jalen Ramsey? You wonder what Brad Holmes is thinking, and if he'll make a play for this guy. Talk to you again tomorrow.